But yeah, so the um, if if you got that that autoimmune patient or that um, you know chronic disease, multiple you know systems that are malfunctioning, mm-hmm. I'm assuming they're coming to your practice thinking like, what's 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 Dr. Joel going to do for me? I've already been to you know mm-hmm. forty different people. Yeah, like, what what could you know? They're probably loaded down with discouragement. Mm-hmm fear, you know, like this is just my lot in life. Uh, I mean, do you feel like you're, are you starting off, you know, like, okay. Um, more in a manner of, uh, just like encourage them. Like it is feasible. It is possible. You know, there mm-hmm. is hope for you. Um, or, or do you, or do you have like, basically do you have a, a particular pattern or. Yeah. Kind of, routine? I think, I think, um, yeah, yes and no. So part of it really depends on uh, where the patient comes in and the, that, the, the mood and emotion and kind of how maybe, you know, beat up the patient is from their experience. Because um, some patients come in and they're still like, okay, I know I can do this. I just don't know how to do it yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and then so you, you're not having to like uh, motivate them out of a deep, dark hole, but you know, they're definitely needing some specific direction, but they're going to run with it. But other patients that come in that are in a deep, dark hole, cause they kind of have lost a lot of their hope and doctors have told them there's no hope. And cause the doctors, and a lot of times if a doctor tells you there's no hope, then that means that doctor does not know how to treat you, but they're mm. not humble enough to tell you, I don't know how to treat you. And someone else might. Yeah. So, so the idea is that, uh, I believe, and I tell them that the human body get in most things, the human body can heal from most things given the right support and that, but that support again, has to be emotional, physical, spiritual, um, nutritional, all of that. Uh, you know, and so the idea is that you have to really look at, uh, what support that person needs. So part of it is, is I look at everything that they've done, um, all of the information, what everything they've done that hasn't worked. And that's also very diagnostic and supportive for mm-hmm. me. Cause then I know, and I, and I often will tell them, cause a lot of times patients that have done a lot, they forget like half the things they've done. And so I said, I'm going to, I might suggest something to you and you may have done that. It may have totally flopped. So you just keep me posted on that. And if I say, have you tried this? And then you're like, oh yeah, that was horrible. Then you get, that's, then tell me because that, that is actually helpful. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that will help me build my model on like what, what to do and how to approach it. And so yeah. um, I'll look at uh, both uh, labs and I'll look at, um, you know, imaging, and then I'll look at what, what possible diagnoses were given. But I never assumed that the diagnosis was accurate because uh, a lot of times when someone is in more of a multi-system issue, then someone will latch on to one facet of it. Uh, mm-hmm. And a doctor will, a physician will, will latch onto one facet of it. And then that's the diagnosis name they get. Uh, but then once that happens, all the other doctors just assume that that's what they have. And then they kind of don't, their, their curiosity level drops and they all just kind of get in line the same, but diagnosis. Yes. Uh, and so you have to really always question the diagnosis and it may be, it may be very accurate, but it also frequently is not accurate enough. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and so then with that, or, or it's just, again, one facet and there's like five other facets. And so, uh, then you have to look for what was the chain of, do- like, how did the dominoes fall for that person? Uh, and so you have to look way back in their life. Uh, sometimes you go back a year, sometimes you go back 10 years, sometimes you have to go back to when they were like born. Um, and, and then you have to go back until you find the thing you're looking for in the instigating event. So there's almost always some kind of instigating event or a series or, you know, years of instigating events, but you have to kind of find that sourcing, uh, and then, uh, figure out the pattern. And so it's very detailed, uh, kind of note-taking, um, Mm -hmm. and then figure out what medicines they got at what point, how did they react to those medicines? Even if, uh, they always try, cause, cause you know, there's, uh, no condemnation. And in that interview, it's all about looking and seeing, cause some people have tried all kinds of stuff. And so I look and see also, have they tried any, any, prescription drugs. So they tried any recreational or illegal drugs and all that. And how did they respond? Cause if when they were 15, they tried something and they responded horribly to it, that also helps me know what's going on brain chemistry for them. Uh, mm-hmm. Or if they responded really well to it and, but then decided not to be addicted or something, then that also helps too. So you, you have to look at all aspects. You have to look for women. You have to really know kind of each decade of their life. What was their menses and hormones like? Um, even if they're in menopause now uh, you kind of have to know what was their pattern on how they got there. Yeah. And then that's usually brings up a lot of very useful clinical information and discussion. Um, so I'd say that you really have to like look around uh, at all aspects of their life and you go as far back as you need until you find uh, enough of an instigating event to explain why they have the symptoms they have. Um, mm. And again, the diagnosis to me is not as the actual like, you know, medical ICD-9 insurance, di- ICD-10 now insurance diagnosis is not 
necessarily as important to me um, as why they have their symptoms. And that's yeah. also kind of more from like a Chinese perspective is uh, the diagnosis is, you know, um, so an example would be as if someone, you know, if someone has a cold or flu, I don't honestly care really what virus it is. I care how is it manifesting for that person. Mm -hmm. um, and so then that lets me know how to treat that person because that same virus can manifest, you know, 70% differently in another person. And right. so then that person needs to have a variation of treatment that is different. And so frequently the same person comes with the same illness or even husbands and wives show up with the same illness. Uh, if it's more of an acute illness and I'll have to treat them differently because it's gone into their bodies differently based mm -hmm. off of how they've manifest, but you have to look at, I, I do like what they call like a train analysis to figure out where are the points in their, where are the inflammatory and weak spots in their body, their immune system, their heart, their emotions, their spiritual. And a lot of that goes into talking about their family, um, their relationships. And some people are like, you know, my husband, wife, we're husband, wife, they're like, we're great. Uh, we, everything's good there. Um, other people are like, that's a extreme source of that person's pathology and, and, and what's allowed their body chemically to move into a disease state. Uh, and so if they need to look for severe healing in that environment in order to really free up their ability for their body to heal, because I have some patients that usually the ones that have the hardest to heal physically are the ones that have the hardest to heal emotionally. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and they're, and they're feeling in there, they feel stuck at somehow and they're not able to achieve uh, an emotional freedom and healing from uh, either past events or traumas or existing relationships. Um, and so once that starts to heal, then all of a sudden you, you just feel like the floodgate open and that person's uh, healing journey is on the way. And they're, uh -huh. it's like starting the, starting the Seattle, the Portland uh, bike race, like we did, was that 10 years ago or something? And it's like, once you go, you go, you're, mm -hmm. and there's no, there's no stopping. And so uh, the idea is that you got to figure out that, but really the, the emotional and the spiritual uh, guides a lot of the healing process. And so the labs are important. Uh, physical events are important. Uh, hormonal history is important. But that spiritual, emotional, really, if that's not incorporated, so you really have to incorporate that into everyone yeah. um, on whatever level that person's willing to engage you on. And some people are not willing to engage you and other people, as you gain trust with them, they engage more and more and they're mm -hmm. able to uh, actually uh, get the healing there. And then yeah. you see, see them take off and the rest of their healing in their body. And that's whether it's um, emotional issues, physical issues, autoimmune issues, um, or, you know, chronic infectious issues, and all of that stuff there, you know, once, once the emotional part is, 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 uh, getting improved, everything else is going to benefit. So that's mm -hmm. what, one, of, one of the things I found. That's so, good, man. That's super good. Yeah. I really like what you said about the, uh, you know, you got the person, maybe you have like a husband and wife that both come in with the flu, go, go come <laughs> in with like that C virus that's out here right now. Oh yeah. And, um, and our, basically I feel like the standard American has been taught that you do the same thing for everything. Like, you know, there's, there's only one, pro, there's only one protocol out there. You know, everybody mm -hmm. needs Iver or everybody needs hydroxy um, or everybody needs, um, you know, steroids or, you know, let's just, we just, this is whatever we just pack it all in. Doesn't matter. Right. Um, and uh, I think that's, that's so good. Cause you know, the, the individualized medicine, I mean, that is like, that is what we need. We, everybody, yeah. so everybody's amazing. body is coming to every condition at a different space. Um, mm -hmm. so, you know, you're one, say like the husband, uh, mm -hmm. like I was just, you know, a patient having pre, pretty significant issues last night that was, that, that came in for an IV and the, uh, you know, the husband came into this infectious situation with, um, you know, they run all the time and, uh, but, they also are a, a sugar, a sugaraholic. Mm, um, and yeah. whereas the wife, um, not quite as active, but she's not a sugaraholic. And I can say mm -hmm. from blood work, yeah, he definitely looks more metabolically deranged versus her. And literally, you know, he, he definitely needs like intravenous therapy. He needs, you know, a lot of support mm -hmm. himself back mm -hmm. and running. And I really, I mean, she could take a little bit of, uh, you know, herbal support on, on the mm -hmm. antiviral front and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, some kind of just kind of adaptogenic herbs to get her energy back. And, and she's feeling, you know, great within, you know, 72 hours. Totally. Um, and so yeah. I, I think, yeah, it's, it's just, it's just wild how, um, you know, if this, if you did the standard, Amer standard American model of medicine and both people came back positive for a condition, like nine out of 10 times, they're literally going to get the exact same medication, exact same therapy. Oh, totally. When, yeah. you know, one of them might need a really aggressive therapy and one of them may need nothing at all. 
Oh, for uh, sure. And and you and you know the the side effect potential with aggressive therapy, um, or you know I would say just money that you're just throwing mm -hmm. out, out yeah. for no reason. Oh, for uh, sure. It's just um, yeah, I think that's super good what you're saying about uh, you know when you, when you do get the flu, when you get a virus, when you do get I mean or you're you're diagnosed with lupus, um, you know oh, yeah. one patient it's the kidneys, the other patient you know they're having uh, no real kit, no real symptoms. They just have you know a little fatigue and it's it mm -hmm. manifests on their skin a little bit. So right. right. Um, you'd want to treat those two people, you know, very, very differently, mm -hmm. but often totally. <laughs> we're not treated them. Any no, same diagnosis. Um, yeah. Yeah, I know.